It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stand. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast, everybody. Host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFall. What's chiming over there, man? I hear I hear that's, something beeping. That's not me. Somebody's beeping. I don't know who's beeping. Well, that wasn't me. Oh, well. We'll go on. No big deal. Good evening, everybody. We're back in the cabin. It's the 6th of May. Yes, it is. From the 4th of May to the 5th of May to the 6th of May. May the 4th be with you? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Sitting in the cabin, sitting back, starting off our show with our uh, Awakening the Hunt coffee blend, Hunter's that, Blend. That's right. Awaken the Hunt. Thank you to Hunter's Blend Coffee for supplying our beverages Absolutely. here on the podcast. While we talk, keeps our whistle wet. Make sure you get over and check them out at huntersblendcoffee.com. Pretty smooth stuff, I tell you. It's my weekend coffee, and uh, it works out well. Yeah. It's so you, nice. you, you you have it on Saturday, you have it on Sunday, yep. and here on the show. And here on the show. Well, it will be going with me uh, to the Turkey Woods this weekend. Good. So Good. You start tomorrow, right? Well... Uh, my turkey season starts tomorrow. Right, well, season yeah. starts tomorrow and then whenever yeah. you get out there. Because yeah. you're going to be heading up to your cabin. Up Thursday night. Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And you're going to go hunt chasing Friday. thunder chickens. Hunt Friday, hunt Saturday. Actually, I'm taking a former co-worker, a buddy of mine who retired, oh, back in Jan- January. But we, we've been planning this for about, oh, eight, nine months now. He asked me, he said, yeah, would you, know, would you, would you take me turkey hunting? I'm like, heck yeah. Why wouldn't I? You know, love taking new people out hunting. He so. definitely, and like like Billy Hoffman says here, he saw a smoky gray in the in Fenton area this weekend. If your first time hunter saw a smoky one, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I haven't seen any on trail camera, but that would be pretty awesome. But you know, uh, that's one of the that's one of the big things when you're turkey hunting is to see a smoky gray. You know, I I asked Tim Seas uh, from uh, Lim Walker Game Calls. I ask him on his, he does live stream every Friday night every Friday seven, night at eight o'clock, eight o'clock or eight o'clock. I'm sorry, eight o'clock. On uh, his Facebook page, but I asked him one time. I said, "Do you use trail cameras to scout for birds?" You know, and he's like, "Yeah." And he said, "I've done that." You know, because I've never heard anybody really talk about it. You know, the, so I've started doing it. I started absolutely. Doing it this year. I, on private land, I don't see why not. Why not get those cameras out there and yeah, see what's out there. I know uh, Greg Miller over in Wisconsin. He's posted several pictures. Uh, matter of fact, his wife uh, got one yesterday morning. Her first bird. Right on. on their property, and uh, he's uh, definitely used the trail camera. You know, he had a couple strut, and so he kind of yeah. knew what he was dealing with. But right. why not, right? Well, you know what I've been able to do and been able to find out by using trail cameras is, you know, I went up last weekend. I had my cameras in the field for about a month and pulled the cards, got all my info and things, and then I, I went up again this weekend. We had our, our annual meeting at camp. Yep. At our deer camp. It's May. So I'm like, okay, well, they've been out another week. I'm going to go pull the cards. In between that month and then this week, I I actually went out and, and have a location to set my pop-up blind because of my trail cameras. Okay, cool. Good deal. You got a starting point. You don't... Uh... Yeah, and yeah. then from there you can go. For, you know, if you need to you move around. Well, I knew birds in the area. They always come through this this one area, and I'm like, okay, well, I got three of them strategically placed. It's kind of on a Y. You know, it, it's you know uh, a, a two track this way, and then my field, and it kind of, they kind of feed together and go down the two track, and that's generally the route they take. But I'm like, are they coming through the field? Are they coming down the two track? Where are they popping in? Where are they popping out? And uh, I put these cameras up, and it it worked great, man. I just really, yeah, well, that's so, cool. That's exciting, really, because where know. I thought the Y was, you know, where they come together, the two travel corridors, right where I thought it would be, and I, I stood there and I'm looking, like, okay, where can I put a pop up blind so I can I can maximize my potential to get them coming, going, or hitting that other trail off to the side, and yeah, I figured it out. So sweet. So yeah, I'm gonna get up a little early Friday morning. And uh, 
get the pop up blind and a couple chairs and okay, you know, because you know, I I don't know if the guy that's going with me will be able to run and gun like I do. So right, you, you don't know his his style style yet, what he's used to and all that. So you know, we'll try that. And and the other thing is I found is timing wise is generally an afternoon run. Oh, on the trail camera, it's an afternoon thing. So I probably won't. I might go out and set my stuff up, leave the vehicle, walk away, you know, from the area, go park the vehicle away from the area, um, carry my stuff in, set up, and then go run and gun in another spot. Okay. Dictate and then, wherever the birds may be, and then come back and hunt the afternoon there. And, and, I, and I'm going to say that it, depending on if you get out there, you put up your pop-up line and you start hearing them. Right, right. You know, that might play a different... Right. You might just sit tight. <laughs> so, you know, it it uh, it saved me a lot of time. It saved me some guesswork. So now I've got a I got a spot I can go to, and they've been running through there just about every other day. Okay, pretty regularly, sometimes every day, but generally, you know, once in at least a, a two day period of time, which that helps. You know? and, I, and I think with this warm weather, because I think it's finally, I think you finally lost all your snow up there, didn't you? No, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, there's still snow. There's no still, way. There's still snow in, in the shadows. If you have a road that runs east and west, and you, you know, you th- kind of think about it a little bit. On the east side of that road, in the tree lines, the sun's not high enough yet to melt that snow. Really? It was 70 degrees up there. Yeah. There was still snow on the ground. Yeah. On the east wow. sides of the roads. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. Almost to the middle of May. Hopefully by next weekend it'll all be gone because I, mm-hmm. I think it's actually supposed to be now warm. So. Yeah. Well, there wasn't a lot of snow, but I mean, there was still snow on the ground. Right. So, interesting. Right. Well, good luck to you on this Friday morning and the person you're going with, getting them out there. Right. Always good to see a first first timer get out there and smack a couple, right? Right, right. So hoping to, we've got uh, I don't know. I've counted six different gobblers. Okay, they're breaking up now. Um, funny thing is, there's one that's got either two or three beards. Really? But they're about that long. Uh, <laughs> it's a Jake. So it's a Jake with a multi beard. Yeah. So gonna let him go. Let him go. Let him mm-hmm. grow. Right. You can do it with turkey. Mm-hmm. Why not? You know. That's right. So. But yeah, so guys, I guess the point is, is if, uh, you know, you get the opportunity, you know, throw a trail cam up, man. It's not going to hurt anything. You know, try that. It's, uh, yeah, definitely. You know, why not? Right. You know, if you're in a good spot where you can get a trail cam- camera out there and have not, no worry of it being stolen. Right. Throw one up. That's right. Throw it and out I put there. lock boxes on mine anyway. Right. So, but mm-hmm. no, so that's, that's, that's my, I guess my tip, tip of the week for you. There you go. Um, Speaking of up north, um, did you see any deer? Deer are everywhere. Um, yeah, a lot of deer. Um, everything that I saw had, like last week, mouth to the ground. You know, you drive by, you're, you know, you're creeping along a dirt road or a two track, and, you know, you kind of slow down. They'll pick their head up and look, look at you, and then, I, okay, I don't, you know, he's, he's not a threat. Bang, back to eating, you know. It's, they're feeding. I mean, flat out, they're just, they're feeding, 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 and feeding. Yeah, because it's been a while, and I, I, I noticed around here, uh, things are starting to pop on the smaller bushes. So mm-hmm. that's that's right at their right at their level. Right. So no, I, they're I, they're feeding. Right. But one thing I have not noticed on trail cams yet is I have not seen any uh, antlers starting to grow. Yet. Okay. You know, still eh, it's first week of May. You know, that'll be cranking here pretty quick. Uh, Tim Sias says nothing wrong with a multi bearded Jake. Take him out. He wants me to take him out. He wants you to take him out. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. I know there's a couple paintbrushes running around, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chad. Chad Haberman. Hey, Chad, what's going on? Chad's on. Yeah, I'm trying to twist his arm getting up for bow season this year, so. Oh, yeah. Matter yep. of fact, I'm going to tell, tell a quick story about Chad. We, we were in our, our meeting, our annual meeting okay. at camp, and all of a sudden, he's like, here comes Turkey right down the, the road, right up by the building and we had to restrain him keep him from going out at no i'm just kidding <laughs> but no everybody stopped i mean the whole meeting just stopped and everybody's looking phones come out start taking pictures you know a big old gobbler i mean a big one came right down the middle of the road yeah. right, right down the hill yeah yeah right down the hill right right across uh in front of the little pond and right there at the window <laughs> got within probably 20 30 feet turn on went back up I probably saw us inside or something but he yeah. made his presence known and Hey yeah. guys, here. Yeah, I am. yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Chad was trying to get out that door. Yeah, I had to hold him back. There you go. 
No, nah, I'm, I'm telling the story on him, so. That's good. Um, hey, Jim Miller, what's going on? Edith Trout, my wife's grandma, is watching. Thanks for watching, Edith. We'll give her a quick there shout you out. There go. So, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it was a good weekend. It was warm up there. Got some work, to, you know, got out and got my trail cams checked. Got my spot picked out, so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, life is good. Yeah, definitely a good weekend. There yeah. wasn't a, a little rain this afternoon somewhere, yeah. but. You might have had a little bit more rain up north, if I remember right, seeing the weather this morning. It sprinkled on me a couple times coming home. Yeah, they were, actually, get, they were getting something today. Actually, um, you know, I, I, let me tell this story when we come back. We're going to take our first break. We're going to step outside real quick. Uh, for those of you on the live stream, hang on. But uh, we're going to take our first break, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with our all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, everybody. We are on the second segment of the show. Right before we went to break, it's talking about on my way home. I'm I'm coming down 33. Now, did you leave before dark or after dark? Oh, I left way before dark. I wanted to get home. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the plan was to get home before dark. Oh. I'm coming down 33. Coming just getting ready to come into Rose City. Coming off the hill, and you can see across the top of town, and there's this haze, thick haze. I'm like, fire. I said, there's there's a wildfire. So. Pulled in Mickey D's, grabbed me a sandwich real quick, and I was like, hey, I said, anybody know what's going on? I said, there's a fire. I said, is it a wildfire? And they're like, huh? And all of a sudden, you hear the fire trucks pull out. I go, well, I guess you're right. There is fire. I'm like, I know there's a fire because I can see the haze hanging over top of town. So I was checking the wind direction and everything. I'm like, I'm going to go see if I can find it. Yeah, well, that didn't happen. You didn't find a fire? <laughs> no, I what? drove about 20 miles. I did a big loop around. I drove around it somehow, but never could find it. So where there's smoke, you couldn't find fire. <laughs> no, no, no. So that's pretty funny though. It was hanging over town. Yeah, but uh, it's dry. You know, you'd think it was as much rain as we had, but it is it is bone dry. Matter of north. fact, they were mentioning that just the end of last week that we were under the whole state of Michigan mm-hmm. was under red flag warning. Yeah, burn ban. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't. Yeah, and definitely you can when you're walking, you can hear it just yeah. crunching away, and the grass, let alone, is, is brown and. Hey. Even though things are greening up, it's think about this. And when I went to the fire, uh, the uh, fire councils seminar. Oh yeah, back when was that in the winter? Yeah, a couple February. Months. Yep. You know, they said it's a misconception. People think, okay, well, you get rain in the spring, everything's green. How's it going to catch on fire? You know, it's not. It, it is. It's dry because if you think about it, all the plants are taking the moisture out of the ground. They're sucking up that moisture and turning everything green and growing. So there's less moisture content in the ground. Yes, it, it's it, like you said; those those shoots are, are growing because they're getting water. Where yeah. are they pulling water from? Right, yeah. the ground. So everything on top of it is just bone dry. Right, exactly. And you know, out in the woods, you got pine needles. You've got mm-hmm. old leaves right now. They haven't dead de- ferns. They haven't deteriorated. The, and you know, and right now the other thing, especially in our area, you know, with oak wilt getting cranked up pretty good. We also got spruce budworm that's coming through, and there's another disease that's killing the, some of the spruce trees. And I forget what it's called, but if you're not doing logging on a regular basis and rejuvenating your forest, if you got old growth stands, and, and there's a lot of that around our property of other surrounding neighbors, it you've got standing fuel, yeah, ready yeah. to ignite. I mean, it's it's like a it's like a dry tender box. You got standing matchsticks mm-hmm. because that's exactly how quick it'll go up, and that's one of the things I talked to my forester about. He says. You're creating a, almost a natural fire break because 
if one you know where yeah. they where they haven't done it and it comes towards you there's nothing to burn. there's nothing to burn right so it, it, it provides a natural break. fire break that they could actually they'd probably he said they'd probably use your place as a staging area to, to in case it was coming through right right so. well i talked to a guy that used to work out here on national force at that meet that uh that fire council meeting and they're talking about prescribed fire and using fire to rejuvenate your your habitat but he has since moved up into the Northeast, but he was talking about the state of Michigan and the mismanagement of the timber, uh, especially in private land area where, like where we hunt is a lot of private land. We're just north of the Huron National Forest. Yep. And he said for years they've wanted to get in there and put prescribed fire to the ground to get some of that fuel load gone. He said if we ever get a fire, he said it can start over on the west side of the state on Lake Michigan and with the wind. He said 75 won't stop it. He said I-75 won't be a natural break. He said it'll jump with all the fuel. It, it has before. They had that yeah. little fire. Well, they had a fire. Little Ron Mac, Grayling. Well, Mac Lake years ago. Yep. Then just within the recent time, uh, the Grayling area, it, yeah. it, it went jumped. right across. Yep. It jumped, the, it jumped the freeway. He said it'll burn from Lake Michigan all the way to Lake Huron. No problem at all. Yeah, he said there's just too much dead fuel loads sitting on the ground. And, you know, that's one thing I'm, I'm so glad to see that we're doing it at our place is, is some logging and taking care of that because we, we lost spruce trees. You know, I had a tree stand in, in, in a tree in the fall and took it down that fall, and the next spring that tree was dead. Spruce budworm come in and killed it in six months. Wow. You know, <laughs> it was gone. So, and, that, and then you hope not to be in that tree and hope, have it fall over. Mm-hmm. You well, know. when you see the whole tree, there, it went from green to brown <laughs> you know really? it yeah i mean r- literally that quick Jeez, old Pete. it killed it so it's amazing how those little buggers can work i know it. it's uh you know so that that's one thing that you know it, it inter- interests interests me is the fact of using prescribed fire in the right situations but right now man if you guys are if you're thinking about no burning. doing anything that do not burn right now no burning no backyard fires so it could get it could get sketchy real quick but yeah i saw that one coming home you know and, really and i was actually the reason i went look i was going to shoot video right exactly i know, you know? what i did so i was like yeah okay I'm, you know i have my camera with me why not yeah get out and shoot some video so on the rest of your trip did you see some deer in fields yes all the way home just like the last time deer feeding i mean they're putting the feed bags on um the older deer, this is what is really interesting. We've all, you know, we've talked about doe management, you know, shooting the older does because they produce more does than they do bucks. But think about this too, at this time of the year with green up, who's going to get the best food that's available? What little food there is? The mature does. Yep. Mature does are heading for the, they're going to be mowing. They're going to, they're going to be fighting and, and running off all the other younger deer. Right. Exactly. And, they come in and, and feed on my green grasses. It right. Is, they're looking for anything green. So, with that being said, the little deer look little. I mean, they look, they look they look like they're starving. But you look at the the bigger deer, okay, yeah, they don't look like they're they do going into deer season, but they're in a lot better shape than they are than the younger ones. Absolutely, that's the whole the whole thing of it is how do they look coming into May? Because we're gonna have fawns dropping here soon. Right now we're into May, so those healthy does that. Might have had a little bit of stress. They're going to be dropping yeah. some deer. They need they need some green up now. Right, right. So um, I was I listened to somebody this weekend. Um, I had the opportunity to hear a little bit of deer talk. Okay. And something I didn't know how much how much do you think an average fawn needs per day of milk from its mother? Oh, well, we know deer need five, five pounds a day. Yeah, average. Yeah. Average adult during five to six pounds of food I'm, a day. I'm going to... A day? For a, a one fawn a day, average milk. I, I'm just going to say a, a couple pints. Okay, so a pint's what? Eight ounces? Yeah. So you're saying 16 ounces. So like, yeah, two pints. 16 ounces of milk a day, I guess. Almost quadruple that. 62 ounces. A big gulp. Yeah, yeah. 64 ounces. 64 ounces of milk they need a day. Which is what, a half gallon? Uh, yes. Half gallon. Yep, so 128 roughly. ounces a gallon. Okay. Um, that's one fawn. One fawn. So okay. If they've had triplets or double, or double they, that, need, they need... You're reading my mind they right need now. A, they need, for for twins, they need a gallon of milk to be... They need to produce a gallon of milk a day for those two fawns. And the subject came up because we were talking at camp about it, and it it came up that someone had seen a fawn... La- I mean, not a fawn. Somebody had seen a doe last year with triplets 
And it's like, okay, so you go from a gallon to now a gallon and a half. Think about how much food, extra food that that deer is going to need to consume at this time of the year to start providing milk once those fawns hit the ground. I wonder how much out of the five pounds that is needed for the deer itself, what that translate into milk production. Oh, well, I see that's just to get them through the, yeah, not, that's just on average a daily, con- a daily con- consumption of food is five pounds. Is five pounds. So now, how much of that relates? How, to... How much more do they need to produce that? That's what I'm saying. You like yeah. okay, a five pound gets this daily supplement of food. Okay, boom! I have a, I have a fawn. Mm-hmm. Do I need six pounds? Do I need six and a half? You know, how, I wonder how much milk is produced per whatever they right. measure it out. Right. So yeah, they're going to be dropping fawns here in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, they're going to need some lots of. They're going to need a lot of green. Well, yeah, and and you think about that if you if you have food plots and there's nothing in them, I mean, where where does that come from? Think about the population now. If you if you got too many deer, you know, your carrying capacity is, is exploding, and you're at that tipping point, you know, which our area up there, it, it, we're really we're over browsed. We got too many deer. Our sex ratios are askew. So how does that? correlate to this time of the year when you start trying to provide food for milk production when do you start planning and getting food into the ground and food plots you know uh you know people people are already saying they've already started planting i already know people that are planting they're getting you know they're putting discs to the ground right now and really that's almost too late yeah you think because it's going to take a couple weeks to get up yeah so let's say it takes a couple weeks to germinate and you get a little bit of a shoot well it's that's going to be proven by your your plot that has got mowed right. down right i need to take a picture of that next time i'm up and show you what i'm dealing with right exactly. now. exactly I, I, this week i'll do that i'm thinking you're dealing with almost like a putting green of brown if it's green it's green but it's almost like a it's a putting brown. It's, it's a putting green that that you know really i don't have time to load it but i i do have i do have trail cam photos yep let's uh i'll uh, get them next week and we'll see them because we'll be I'll talking you. about your successful turkey hunt Yes, we will. I yeah. Hope. <laughs> and uh, speaking of, of turkeys, uh, Tim Seas on our Facebook uh, has a question for us about that. Okay. What are your thoughts about the low population of turkeys? They discussed it on his show Friday night. Some have said predators and poor hatches. He says more hunters. Just curious about what we think up here in the Michigan area. Um, I think there's two key factors here in Michigan, and, and, I, and I'm not speaking with any absolute knowledge as far as you know somebody has told i've I've heard a lot of speculation and and the two things that i've really heard is the fact of wet springs uh we've had some you know coming in march and april all of a sudden bang now we're finally getting getting some good weather but you think about up north we had we had that ice and snowstorm two weeks two weeks ago you know and there's still snow on the ground in places um good friend of mine David Boggs told me that you need 54 degrees temperature, ground temperature, before they start laying eggs. We're not even close to that right now. I, I don't know what the ground temperature is. So, you know, you shorten that you shorten that cycle, that season, that growing season, of when the poults are, or the eggs are laid and they're raised, and, and how big do they get going into the winter months? Exactly. You know, that I think that's got a lot to do with the wet seasons, the, the short the, or the long winters, I think, at least here in Michigan. Well, let's, with that being said, look, at we're coming off the coldest April ever. Yep. So right there, that's putting us typically a month at least behind. Yeah, right. Of whatever right. goes on, right? So yep. now we're, and it, it, it's a, one of those things. So you could attribute to weather, mm-hmm. uh, the coldness. Obviously more hunters too. I think more people are definitely are definitely picking it up. Hold on to that thought. Let's take our next break. We'll come back. Let's continue this conversation. We're going to step outside real quick, take our next break. we come back. We will answer that question. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets 
are planning a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much needed high energy during and after the rut. You can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, third segment of the show. Hey, AJ Regal's on board. Hey, AJ, what's going on? So, getting back to the question. Yeah, question uh, coming out of West Virginia. So, I'm assuming that uh, their populations are down there. They must be having some uh, low populations. So, what's what what's the cause of this? Some predators, poor hatches, more hunters. He's curious about what we're thinking here in Michigan. Are you seeing less birds? Yes. Interestingly, up at our place, we're seeing more birds. And I think I, I think that it, it, that's why I'm saying I think the hunting for it is increasing. I know public land hunting here is really tough. It is. It is tough. Um, and um, the way they allot tags, it's pretty much been the same for the last 10, yeah. 15 years. Yep. You know, you get 500. There's 500 tags per area, block area. Well, here you go. Per week. Here's your week. Yeah. So take it and good luck. But I have seen, I've seen more hunters, less birds. But I think there's more hunters on public lands mm-hmm. and therefore have pushed birds off onto private lands where there are probably not is as many hunters. Maybe not getting hunted at all. Exactly. That's, I, I know for a fact that every night when I came home, there was birds in one certain field and is like, I, I could tell you where to sit in that field. Right. But it's private, right? Right. But I think, and, and what makes what makes it so nice is, uh, it's getting warmer, and you you really don't have to go far from home. Mm-hmm. It, it's close by, and you can go there after work or, or right. go in the morning, like I was doing, going in the morning, cutting a half day, then going to work. Um, Not like I'm doing making a taking a day off work and making a trip, and right? Going for two days, right? You're you're making a trip out of it, but it, it's that's uh, one of the things about being local here is, is nice to that fact. But um, they just, I think it's more opportunity. Just more hunters are getting out there. Uh, getting youngsters out there, like I had last year, uh, the older gentleman had the the younger boy with him. They right. got out there, so right. I definitely think there's more hunters out there. Uh, as far as predators, uh, I think the predators are up. I've seen a lot of predators last month on trail cam. Oh, have you? I seen I seen I seen bobcat. I saw coyotes, and it wasn't just on that deer carcass. I seen them in other places. I had the other cameras up. And it was, they were, they were running a routine, but this last week there wasn't wasn't a hair to be to, to be found. Oh, okay. Yes. See, um, a friend of mine, uh, he lives, which would be south of Linden. Mm-hmm. Uh, trail camera. He's got three coyotes on camera coming in, coming through. So yeah, I okay. think it definitely. You know, but yours sound like they're kind of going where the food is. They do. They're very cyclical up at our place. You know. The, the the range that they use they they come through and you'll see them for about two weeks and then they'll be gone for two weeks you know so we're just part of that range that they normally run i think kind of the way that works but see my uh my brother terry he says a week ago elmont farmers were iffy on planning because of wet and cold ground temps yep you know yep. you can't get you can't get your food into the ground right can't get your crops in the turkeys can't breed because the ground's not yep for their eggs so yeah, it, it's been a. It, I think it, this might be a, a tough one, just on natural issues themselves. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of how going into the fall, how how, how it is with poults and and how big they get going into winter, and you know how what we see next year. You know, I, you know, we we talk about recruiting fawns. I wonder if if, if the NWTF or, or some other wildlife organization has, has talked about recruiting poults, you know, in, into the fountain the next year. I wonder if there's any studies being done about that. I'm probably sure there are, you know, and I've not seen any, but I'm not went looking for them either. So, right. They, uh, I'll usually, I, sometimes I'll see them when I'm up in July on the cabin property. Okay. I'll, I'll j- jump them by the road and they'll, I'll go scurrying around. Gotcha. Uh, usually I'll sometimes see them in the fall, but then again, they, they move around a lot up there. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm hopefully I'll put trail camera up. Maybe I'll get some on camera, but down here, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. How that works? Well, something something definitely to keep an eye out on. And look, I mean, if if anybody sees anything about that, talking about poults and how they look at poults going into the fall versus coming into the spring. I mean, See, I know we do that with deer, and we use that as a model for, right. for deer management. But they got to be doing something with turkeys, I would assume. Right, and, and, and it's a lot tougher because mm-hmm. um, you can look into a field and, and 
usually the deer is taller than the field. So right, right. Actually, where these where the poles kind of just yeah blend right in. Uh, Luke Sitton has joined us. On hey, the Luke, live, what's going on? Live stream. Thanks um, for joining in tonight. Absolutely. Uh, so, but you're seeing more birds up there. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, at least on my my cameras, I'm seeing I'm seeing more birds. Uh, and actually, physically, I've seen uh, birds in the area as well. Well, that, you had one one. Well, Walk right down to the right the to camp. the cabin. <laughs> yeah, I said, "Open the door. Let's let's right? get him in here." I said, "I know between all of us, we can wrestle that bird down." <laughs> uh-uh. you, you need a professional wrestler. You need yeah, Randy. right. So, but you know, you're talking about uh, turkey season. I I almost I almost screwed up with my license. And I'm glad I haven't bought it yet because I I started really looking at the dates. And you know, because last week on the show, I said, you know, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to hunt Saturday after. Yeah. After but, uh, the meeting, but I I couldn't because that would have actually been the last weekend of that hunt. Right. Instead of taking the, the second part of the hunt. Yeah, it's the way the weekend fell this year, and I I couldn't I couldn't hunt. So my hunt actually my hunting season opens tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So, okay. but I'll be in the woods uh, Friday morning. Sweet. Friday and Saturday. Well, hopefully Friday and hopefully Saturday we're. We're kicking back, taking it there easy. There you go. So. Take care of it Friday morning. Yeah. Have a bonfire Friday evening. Right on, right on. Luke's, so. Luke's sitting and says hi. So, yeah, I, I seen he uh, he posted a picture. Either. They found some shed antlers. Yeah. Like, so. They they not been, not been, too shabby uh, doing a little shed hunting in northern Michigan. Been busy. Been busy. Uh, I think it said 65. That's a lot of boots on the ground. That's a lot of boots walking. Yeah, you know that, that's not too shabby when you can go out and find sixty-five sheds. Do you shed hunt? I I I do. I mean, do you go out and go? Okay, today I'm going to go shed hunt. Do you know, it. we you did actually. Look. Actually, Kelly, I, and Gabby, we did a little shed hunting behind the house because we knew we had that the that nine point back there, and it's like, uh-huh. man, it'd be nice just to get the antlers. Find that guy, and we actually we looked pretty good. We, I said, okay, we're going to go this way one day. We went and we went in different directions. And just nothing. Okay. That's not to say other people have been back there, though, either. Right. You know, that's... Do you think he made it through the season? I think so. I'm hoping to see him. I really haven't been paying attention. I know there's a, a gaggle of deer there in the area hanging around. I think he did. I okay. remember seeing him. I thought it was him a couple weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't find um, any uh, dead. That's good. No bodies, so... Um, down here, the snow was different than it was up north. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm kind of that last one. Oh yeah, that last one was. I gotta talk to my forester again. Uh, he said the deer were looking pretty bad coming off that ice storm. Now up at your place, you asked me, did we still have snow on the ground? Have you talked to anybody up at your camp? Do you have snow? I have not, but I'm gonna send an email tomorrow and okay. find out what the scoop is. Because mm-hmm. if you're telling me there's snow, I know you gotta have snow. Yeah, right? it's just. You're too far north. Right. I'm in the next zip code. Absolutely. So. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we take our last break? We save what little time we got here. We'll talk a, a little more here at the end. Uh, I, got, I got another quick little thing I want to run through uh, about this weekend. So we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Sitting here chatting deer and turkey. All things good. Talking about up north. But I was up north this weekend. And it didn't take very long until I had the creepy crawly. Uh-oh. Yeah. Mr. Ticks. Yep. Here it is. Half a week into May and you're playing with ticks already. You know, last weekend we did the deer brow study. It was cool. It was a nice day. Don't get me wrong. But it was cool. We're just coming out of that, that snowpack. Yeah. Just melted that week. 
And you didn't get none. Didn't get it. Didn't get a tick on me. You know, wasn't even worried about it. And you walked through the woods. Through the woods. Okay. Yep, through brush, through all kinds of stuff. So I'm up there this weekend and I'm on the two track, you know, and that's, I walked the two track and I walked to my camera in the field, but my feel like I told you it's dirt. There's nothing. Right. Yeah. There's nothing there. Right. Here have mowed it down. There's nothing growing. And I'm walking back to my Jeep and I look down on my, I said, I eh, just wonder, you know, and I look down and sure enough, man, there's one crawling up my right pant leg. I'm like, you little sucker. And he hitched a ride. Got out early and hitched a ride. And, you know, and, and I had my sleeves pulled up on my shirt. So, you know, from my elbow down was exposed. I'm like, you know, and as I kind of, I reached down and I pick, get a hold of them and I throw them. When I threw them, I looked and right here on my wrist, a little, there's a little dot. I call them seed ticks. That's what my dad calls them down south. Little tiny seed tick. A little tiny thing. A little tick. And I'm like, you little hemi? You know, I, you know, send them on a flying Get, uh, get back to where you belong. Yeah, flicked him off my my wrist. But after that, <laughs> I I was plays just, in your head, doesn't oh, it? I was itching. I couldn't sit still. It just it felt like I had a million of them on me. Oh, absolutely. You know, so went back, kind of did a tick check real quick, and looks like you're going to be getting out the Promethean for yeah, next weekend. Absolutely. So yeah. So guys, if you know gals, if you're it's out time, there, it's, it's, we're it's back that time of year. Uh, and there's some serious stuff get, that them things carry now. So and protect your dogs as well yeah, absolutely you know don't you know we our dogs we we when we're up at the cabin we every night we check them find them you got so, short-haired dogs though that's a make, that's a that's a bonus yeah. and they're in uh they're blake's white mm-hmm. and cooper's got white on them too so they kind of stick out stick out a little bit and, yeah yeah Co- it was cooper two years ago had one when we got back and pulling pulling and pulling his ear and finally let go and Jeez, oh Pete! It was already taking blood. Oh yeah, it yeah. Was the the had to have Kelly run him to the vet and yank it. And yeah, well, it's that time of year. But the biggest thing is, uh, is definitely uh, start doing tick checks. Start protecting your animals. Uh, yeah. Start protecting yourself. Get some Promethean. Uh, start spraying your clothes. It's good for a few washes. Uh, Luke just he he said he has to be honest that his wife found most of those. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he come clean. <laughs> He's come clean. Well, uh, good job. That's that's good. Uh, just got a note here from Charles Byer, out in Iowa. Uh, mo- more predators here with the prices of fur being down, being ready to leave in a, in a few minutes to, uh, to go after the birds. Uh, had to get his up north journal fix in before he went. Thanks for checking us out today, Charles. Appreciate you chiming in. Absolutely. Good luck. Uh, get a bird. Share some pitch picks um you know that's funny that what he said there about the price of furs Mm -hmm. and i remember and we talked about this in previous shows that the one year that you actually you you did trap and you you sold some furs but ever since then i think price of furs have have gone down went through the floor and for some people it's you know they almost got to do it for the love of it yep because otherwise they're just okay. You're going out trapping, and then that's about it. Because of the price of things, it's not worth it, right? You know, in in and going out getting coyotes or raccoons or or skunks or whatever muskrat, what have you, whatever you can do to trap. Uh, there's no incentive. No, not unless you just love to do it, right? You, you got that passion, or you take well, like uh, the uh, marketing director down at Cabela's Chesterfield. Her brother came in who works at Harson's Island. Yes. And he traps down in Harson's Island there uh, off of, uh, is it Lake Erie or Lake St. Clair? Lake, that's off of Lake St. Clair. St. Clair. Okay. So he, he traps, and they take their fur, him and his wife, and they make musk. She had muskrat mittens. She brought them in that day. That's we checked right. them out. Yes. They're very soft. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if, if you've got that passion, that drive to get out and do it, and then take and tan your own hides and make product out of it to sell, you can make some money. You can actually make good money mm-hmm. doing that. And that's another thing. Um uh, yeah. The way things are getting in this world, it takes time. Mm-hmm. You need the time to, to to go set your traps, to go back to check your traps, yep. and then to to flesh and stretch yep. and whatever Cure you got to yep. do to them. Yep. So that there again, and that takes some time. I know. Uh, I think Chris Krein has been doing some predator hunting on the other side of the state. Yeah, I saw that this weekend. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, as far as trapping, that, that's going to take some time and work. And and down here. Uh, you're you're fighting the uh, private land, yeah. public land. Yeah. Well, we talked about that uh, with one of our members up here at camp yesterday. He was he had his daughter with him, and he was getting ready to go turkey hunting. She wanted to go turkey hunting, so you know he went out, and took her out, and he's like, "Well, I don't know if I should go out this weekend. You know, I, tonight I should wait till tomorrow." I'm like, 
what are you going to do? You're going to sit here at camp. What are you going to do? I said, what's the worst can happen? You don't see a turkey. Big deal. You know, get out there and have at it and have some fun, you know? Well, that's the thing, right? You, you, you Especially up there at the camp, right? Yeah. You're going to sit in the camp and talk, or you can go with your daughter out in the woods yeah. and sit and talk. But he asked me, he said, well, what do I do if I see a coyote? I said, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, you know, he, he really didn't know about seasons or anything like that. And I go, no, you're on private land. Private land, it's 365 here in Michigan, you know. You can shoot them. Shoot it. I said, Shooting. he goes, well, what do I do when I'm done with it? I go, I said, actually, this time of year, you're talking about the fur on them. They're, they're getting a little mangy at this time of the year. They're, they're, they're losing their winter coat. They're not going to be worth anything. Right. I said, Ye- put them up on a tree limb and let them hang so his brothers and sisters and mom and dad and pups and everything else sees them. So that way they get out of here. <laughs> so that's the best thing you can do. Matter of fact, uh, the friend of mine that did the taxidermy on my deer, mm-hmm. when I walked into his garage, he had a, a coyote sitting up he was finishing up a coyote okay and uh that one was got i think he told me in grand blank okay guy got it it was snowmobile <laughs> okay so anyways but it, and really it looked it looked kind of it was a small one mangy, right. and it just it yeah. just looked you know it's just like but you're right what are you gonna do sit in the cabin or go sit out in the woods yeah go in the woods and actually he went out and they got on birds um didn't get one and they got on birds again this morning. Okay. You know, and I think his daughter's 10, you know, and she she's never really been out hunting for us. That was her first experience. So I was like, look, if you go out there, I said, if you just hear birds and you call to them. That's the hook. And they answer. I said, I said, she is going to remember this hunt for the rest of her life. Absolutely. And uh, there's nothing. That's why I love turkey hunting. It, it's one of those things that you can just get uh, until they hear that first. Mm-hmm. Man, it, it, I don't care. You can be sitting there pitch black. Quiet as a jaybird, you know, you hear the frogs or crickets or whatever. And then yep. as soon as a, a gobbler fires off, yeah. he's just like. He said they were about 50 yards away from him. That's about as close as they could get him. Huh? And they, they seen some birds, you know, further off. But uh, he said, yeah, that, that Tom was firing off at about 50 yards. I was like, I said, yeah, she'll remember that hunt for the rest of her life. I wonder how the, I don't think you passed any streams to see any trout fishermen, did you? Uh, I actually went. I cross the Asabo. The way I go now, I take a back road to camp. Okay. And I cross the 4001 bridge. That, it's a, that's a bridge everybody knows there just out a mile. And uh, there, was, there was a couple cars in the parking area, but I didn't see, I didn't see anybody in the river either way. And I actually stopped and took pictures. So okay, because uh, the cameraman uh, on Channel 4, where they do the picture of the river, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, there, were, there was boats just lined up on the American side. The walleyes are running, so right. You got walleye, you got trout, you got turkey. It's just like it's this kind time of, of year the, is good, man. The spring smorgasbord going on. Yeah, um, this time of year is good. Actually, we had a turkey in our front yard uh, this week. I just I, Jake told me one day. He, he my son's home from college. He came in on Wednesday. And it was either Wednesday or Thursday. He come pulling in the driveway, and he said there was a, a hen in our front yard, and she ran over here between us and the neighbor. And I'm like, well, what did you do? And he goes, well, I kind of went around to look. And he goes, but I knew she was she was fenced in. She couldn't get out, you know. But he said once she saw me again, like he was on foot, she jumped and flew and got over the fence into the neighbor's yard. And he said after that, he just left her alone. Yeah. So. Welcome to my world, Danny Red Defaw. Tim Seas. <laughs> I wonder which world that is. <laughs> wait, wait, is that code for something? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I'm... I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to think of what he's talking about. Okay. But anyways, um, yeah, so um, getting back on the turkeys and, and everything going on, yeah, their, their walleyes are running. So I was just wondering how the trout people were doing up there. I know last weekend uh, a guy I used to work with who works uh, at a different place now, he, he, we were talking back and forth because he knew I was going up last weekend, and he was going to fish the Asabo. But he's never been trout fishing before. And I I stopped at the 4001 Bridge parking area on the way up last weekend and uh i was taking some pictures and stuff there but the the water was still high at that point because we just had that big melt off from that big ice oh (laughs) yes winter dump you know we had the ice storm they had the big snowstorm up there so the water was high it was really dingy and it was it was moving quick so he didn't get a bite at all really and i talked to a guy i work with who was up on the west side of the state 
pretty much the same scenario over there. Water was too high. Yeah, and it was too cold. It was windy. Um, well, current it, was quick. It kind of makes sense. They caught a couple right off the bat, and then the rest of the weekend was kind of dead. Okay, so that okay. And by the way, it's the Tim Sia says it's the gobbling in the dark in the morning. Oh, okay. Yep, <laughs> totally understand that. So that even proves into fishing. Uh huh. Here we are coming off the coldest April. Yep. The weather hasn't been the greatest. Yeah. And. Even the fishing sounds like it got, kind of got messed up a little bit. Yeah. I remember I went up about six, seven, eight years ago, went up to a trout camp on yeah. the opener. And uh, I remember it being cold. I remember it being wet and windy and cloudy. We caught fish, but not gobs of fish. Right. You know? Matter of fact, I think I remember seeing some video. You were going through water from rains that you'd, you'd gotten. So, yep. It, 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 it again, weather plays a, a big thing, and I think I think this April's really messed some things up. You think about how much snow was up north. They, uh, they, well, yeah. we we didn't get to go to the deer summit, and that was April fifteenth. Right. Okay. They got you know twenty something inches of snow at our place, and then you jump to the opener of. Now let me see. The opener for trout was April twenty sixth that morning. So you're talking. Oh, no way. I take that back. One yeah. week. I'm looking. April twenty eighth. Two weeks. So that snowpack, 30-some inches or 20-some inches of snow, melted in two weeks and is in the river system. It is in the rivers, and yep. So it's amazing what Mother Nature can dish out. Right on. So, but... Oh, see, Andy Eberhard chiming in. The late April snowstorm ruined my steelhead fishing. There you go. So whether you're above the water, on land, or under the water, yeah, it's it's been you got messed tough. up. It's been tough on it's been tough on critters. It is it, it, in, it's in the been, outdoorsman. It's been tough on critters, and you know it'll be it'll be interesting to say because we talked about how it's going to even out. Yeah, and also so, it got warm quick. So we we had a, a wet, cold April, hot, dry. Summer. What's that mean? Is it going to be a a hot, dry summer or a hot, dry fall? Yeah, or a cold. A, a, you know, you worry about that, too. I mean, it's planting season right now, too, for food plots. You're right. You start putting seed in the ground. You don't get no water. Yeah. You're not going to grow. Do? Yeah, what do you do? You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'll probably be putting some food plots in when I'm up in in July. And last year, actually, it was uh, Labor Day weekend I put them in. But if I try to put them in July, I'm going to need a little bit of rain. Is that the first time you go up for the year? Uh, it might be, unless I can sneak up for a weekend to just get a quick open the cabin. Um, fix the water lines <laughs> those are fixed right now yeah but uh it might be the first time for the, this year's july okay all right so but i don't know how it's gonna work out hey mark storks thanks for joining joining the show um he's up in your area we talked about that mark and jim they're uh you go up 33 out of mile and when you turn right to go to your way you go left up there the big big curve the big curve i think when you take 33 out of mile and you make that right hand to go to Fairview. Okay. You go the other way. They're yep. the other way. Yeah, Mount, Mount Tom's Road or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah, I know where you're talking about. Yeah. They're up in that area that way. So uh, he's probably, I know he's got, I think they got 20 acres that they deal with. Okay. So, um, but yeah, interesting uh, spring we're having. And when we get to fall, when we by the time we get to fall, it'll be, it'll be an interesting summer that we have. Yeah, well. I'm just waiting to get the boat, get the bows cranked up, get them out. You know, the weather's been a little, little iffy here this week. When windy, man, the wind this week was horrible. I was going to shoot, uh, get out and shoot a little bit, and actually, I was going to go ride the bike. Actually, today, after I got everything done in the yard and start getting miles back on the bike, oh, yeah. I've only been out twice this year so far. And uh, I come in and I was going to change clothes real quick, and all of a sudden the temperature just dropped about 15, 20 degrees. It in did. Like an hour, you know, it was amazing, but. Uh, yeah, it is. It's been a really goofy year. Andy so Haberhard suggestion. We need to get a meteorologist on to talk about the extended forecast for the summer and fall and the impacts of a cold April. Okay. I, I can talk to our guy about that. Um, he's, he's always interested in things of that nature. It would be interesting to see what he has to say. Yeah, how, how things ride and even out and what, what trends may happen with that. Yeah, I've got a, I've kind of got our our weather guy in my back pocket, so to speak, uh, the one that I work yeah. with every day, uh-huh. and the uh, one you drove a plane in his ear. Yep, uh-huh. yep, yeah, that guy. Yeah. So we're always talking. I'm trying to educate him on animals and how the weather you well, know plays with that, and you maybe know, he'll he, educate us on weather. Yeah. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll bring that up and see what he says. That'd be awesome. See if we can pick his brain a little bit. Absolutely, I would like to pick his brain. That so. would be a riot. 
Maybe we'll get him on. Maybe we can get him on the show. Actually, uh, I hate to say it, but he's leaving town here in about a month and a half. So if we do it, we have to do it quick. Yeah, you got to get him on. Yeah, so uh, he's moving on to greener pastures. Yep. So. It's, it, it happens in the industry, right? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of something here at the industry, I, you know, we got about three minutes here left. Now, I want to I want to say something real quick, and I'm not going to mention names or nothing, but uh, I've got a I've got a real good friend, and he had an accident this here last week. And uh, if you guys, if you just take some time and just give us some positive thoughts or prayers, uh, and hopefully later it, we know more. We, yeah, we, it, it just happened, so we're just getting yeah, the details. We're, we're just we're just getting the the very beginnings of it. But once this person wants to talk a little bit about what happened, um, we'll be able to share a little more. But right now, we just want you guys and gals to send some positive thoughts. Um, to one of our friends, and that's about all I can say about it right now. A friend of the UNJ. Yep, yep, a real good friend. So, um, And when you guys are out in the field, you know, w- whether you're planting food plots, getting tree stands, doing a prescribed burn, what, whatever what, you're doing. Whatever man, you're doing out in the field. Stop, take a breath, think about what you're going to do, and not rush through it. Don't rush through it. The biggest thing, think it through like you do in, in when you're gonna when you're going to cut a board. Always measure twice, yep. cut once. Yep. Same thing. Yeah, think about it twice before you go and do it. Yep. First time it might sound like a great idea. Yeah, give it a second and think about it. and Go, yeah, okay, maybe. Not. Well, you know, it's like being up at my place. You know, how many times have I th- I thought this weekend I was like, well, you know, I I really ought to get my stands like undo everything, kind of get them loose and, and get them down on the ground and get ready for wherever I'm going to move them to this year. Um, but I thought, no, I'm by myself out here. I mean, there's people at camp, but I was out in the field by myself, and I was like. I'm not going to push it because when you start pushing it, that's when you get hurt. You know, I don't want to fall. Uh, you, you just, you never know. You don't want to fall in, in, you don't know when that you were by yourself, but you mm-hmm. don't know when they might've figured out back at camp. Something's yeah. wrong. Yeah. It could be a day, <laughs> you know, truthfully. Yeah, it could be. You know, they could say, well, where's Mike at? Well, I, I think he went home. Right. Is his truck here? Well, his yeah. truck's not here. Oh, yeah. He must've went home. Yeah. You know, not look in your room or whatever it is, and figure right. out you're still out there somewhere. Right, right. And so. you don't have, you might have cell phone service, but yeah, you might not be able to get to your phone. Right, you might be knocked out. Right, so. exactly. So definitely, uh, when you're working your property or you're out and about, whether you're outdoors camping, fishing, uh, just take your time. Yep. Be have careful. somebody let somebody know where you're at. Let them know when you're going to be back home or back to camp or what have you. Um, let them know where they can find you if something is to happen. I mean, those types of things are very important. Have a have an emergency plan. Absolutely. So, um, and have, like I said, if, if at all possible, have somebody else with you to help you. So, don't have to be the the gun ho hero. No, no, and, uh, and like, like I said, just uh, send us some positive thoughts and prayers. Uh, from, and we'll pass them right along. Yep, absolutely. So, that's all I want to say about that. Yep, till we know more. So. So, anything else you got this week? Not this week. Hopefully, next week we'll be talking to you about getting a bird, maybe two. Well, I'll probably be doing a little bit of live streaming from camp. I'm All hoping. Right. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, I've got uh, I got my coffee ready to go. Hunter's Blend coffee. We've got our Limb Walker game calls that are going in the pack here tonight, and start getting my stuff ready to go. And uh, can't forget my turkey sling. Don't forget that. We got that ready to rock. So now don't. When you take the, the new person, don't cheese him off that he uses that on you. No, that won't happen. No. He'll be slinging you over his shoulder Actually, saying, all right, Mike, you're coming with me. You know, I, I hate to jinx myself because it's been a while since I've shot a bird, but the setup that I've kind of been thinking through my head with the trail cam photos and, and, and when I, I kind of surveyed the area when I was up there this weekend, the way things happen and in the, in the way they've been coming in on the trail camera might get a shot at a double. There you go. That would be impressive. You know, that'd be nice. So Absolutely. So we'll talk to you next week about it. Same yeah. time, same station. That's right. So uh, anything else you want to throw at him this week? Nope. All right. Well, for the podcast, we're going to sign off. For those of you on the live stream, you can hang around here yeah. for a few minutes. So. Hang around here for a few minutes. So for the podcast people, that'll do it for this week, folks. We'll be back again next week. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Carbon Express, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Hunting Scent, Killer Food Plots, Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Limb Walker Game Calls, Twisted Minds Bowstrings, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Antler Action, and family traditions tree stands.
Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.